Section A2, Guide in Problem Solving. Now, when I went to school years ago, even going back to high school when we had word problems, and then through college, and then in grad school where we were explaining things to other students as teaching assistants, we would have a scheme like this. Say, write down the given. Write down your given in a hard problem. And we'd always encourage students to work on scrap paper first and you know, recopy you know, your homework to like turn it in, you know, so it's like nice and neat. So you have the given, and if there's a diagram, uh, go ahead and include the diagram. If there's no diagram, you might want to include one anyway. Like if it says dropping a ball. So here I have a picture of a building. I might have a little ball up there, so I'm going to drop it and then give this height here a letter H and to emphasize that this is something that doesn't move, we might do something like that. So the diagram does not have to be a real polished diagram. We could just say, give a sketch. So you have a given, you have a sketch of the diagram and state the question. So the person reading your homework knows like what you're trying to solve. You don't really need to recopy the problem question exactly, uh, but if you at least give, list the given and have a sketch and it's clear what you're trying to solve, like maybe you're trying to solve for the time, like this. Then you use your equations. You pull out some equations in physics, and then you're gonna be doing some math to solve the equations. And then you should check to see if your answer is reasonable. And the last step would be to include units And the units, like, you know, if it's five, you mean five seconds, you know, five days, five weeks, five years, like, like, what do you mean? And then the amount of significant figures, and this is going to be discussed in the next section, the significant figures. I'll just put down sig, fig, significant figures. We'll just talk about that. Because when you have a calculator, it's easy to get numbers like 5.2367, you know, some kind of lots of lots of uh, numbers with the decimal, and you don't know things that accurately. So if I say five seconds, that's reporting one significant figure. That will come later. So this is the basic setup. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about this because there's a, a, a neat story at my school many, many years ago the accreditation team asked my school, like, here's a homework assignment. Say, if you want to be recredited re again, like in 10 years, like every 10 years, and I think this was in the middle of one of the accreditation periods, they basically said, you have to come up with a scheme that can work with all disciplines. We're a small school, so we have to worry about, you know, something working with sociology, economics, and physics. And they came out with a scheme that did incorporate this kind of thinking. And, here it is, I thought that's cool. Uh, they called it the inquiry arc, where the inquiry is the question, like when I do a homework problem or a word problem in math, it, you have a question, like you're trying to, trying to figure something out. You have the question, the inquire stage, then you have the apply stage, that's the A, where you're going to you know, you pull out those equations we talked about and, and do some math in terms of physics, engineering. And then you're gonna reflect on the answer. Is it reasonable? And then to do a proper communication, communicate, you wanna make sure your significant figures are correct and that you have your units. To avoid the miscommunication like we talked about with the Mars uh, orbiter, where communication was poor there because the units were not included and from our last section, the Mars orbiter was lost. It's an artist's conception.
of the Mars Climate Orbiter. So let's look at this idea. Well, there's the question. Here is, you know, time equals, if it's a time, drop the ball. So there's your question. You have inquire. And then we have uh, apply. So when you have the given and the question, then you apply. And here's where you're doing your math and equations. You have equations and you have the math. Then for the reflect stage, you're looking at, is it reasonable? You're asked that question. And then the communicate stage, you are going to have the units and the significant figures. Now, you don't really need this. This is like a framework. I mean, we had to do it if you wanted to be accredited you know, at our school. We had to integrate this into our teaching, and I think it helps students. But I would always tell, tell you and anybody that if this doesn't help, just don't use it. If you like to approach problems at your own, you're going to be doing the equivalent of this. So it's going to be done. You just don't have to call it anything, and you don't have to like go through the steps in some conscious way, just, just solve the problem. But let me show you how this could be applied in other fields, uh, which is what we had to do at our school. Uh, here I have a little chart where I have the IARC model, inquiry arc model, inquire, apply, reflect, and communicate. Here I have physics, the question, the laws, and the math, and then you know, check the answer and then proper units and you could add to that significant figures. So for invention, uh, Edwin Land said when he wants to invent something, he has a fantasy of something perfect. So invention, the fantasy becomes like the question. And in fact, there's a story, a legend that when he was taking the picture of his daughter, Jenny, in the early 1940s, she said, Daddy, why can't I see the picture right now? Because in those days, you had to like, send the picture off the Kodak. Well, the film. You send the film off to Kodak, and like, they develop it, and then like you send it back. And he invented the instant camera. He had a quiet walk, contemplative walk, for three hours. I believe it was in Santa Fe, and he had the idea, fig kind of the general idea, figured out after the three hours, and it took about three or four years to actually make the camera. So contemplation, you know, thinking, deep thinking, Deep thinking is a part of uh, solving problems. And then you make a prototype, and then you test it, and then you go back and forth here, and then finally you sell it, which is like communication. So that would be a business where you have the vision of the CEO, and then you have research and development where you go back and forth with making a model and testing it, making it an improved model and testing it until you get to the point where you can sell it. And then the marketing division is the selling sales. So the vision, CEO, research and development, and marketing kind of fits this scheme. I applied it here to a pianist. I'm a pianist and uh, use the idea, the fantasy of the perfect performance, and then practice at home and, and reflect every second, reflect on, listen to what you're doing and, and modify. And here, once a week, uh, testing it in front of a teacher, getting some more feedback and going back and forth there, kind of like your research and development, and then your recital. You could do basketball here. A lot of basketball students take my classes over the years, and you have, uh, say, an imagination, fantasy of a perfect game uh, that you're playing, and you practice, practice, and then you modify your technique. A coach can help there immensely, and then finally you have the big game. Michael Jordan uh, went to a uh, school down the road here, uh, about five hours away, uh, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, the Tar Heels. And he was known to practice a lot, practice and practice to perfect the skill. Uh, here's a quote I like to look at. I, I find engineers, uh, physics folks can relate to inventors. In fact, Edwin Lance, a physicist, was studying physics. And Edwin Lance said, you always start with a fantasy. Part of the fantasy technique is to visualize something as perfect. Then, with the experiments, you work back from the fantasy to reality. 
hacking away at components. I like the way he explained that. So you have your fantasy to start out with. That's the question. Why can't I see the picture right away? We're gonna imagine developing the picture inside of a camera with chemicals and all that. And then here, this is the hacking away part, the, uh, the research and development where you have the prototype, you test it and go back and forth. You're doing a reflection and different models. So that's going back and forth. And then finally you're gonna sell it. And when he sold it, he had a big, the big announcement on stage. This was his style to do that. And Steve Jobs loved it. Steve Jobs used that technique where you have the big like meeting, you invite the media and you bring out the new invention, hold it in your hand, say, or you have it on the table when he had the I, iMac on the table. Uh, here, uh, the iPhone, you know, you ha hold it in your hand and demonstrate it with a presentation. And everyone uh, wants it. You're communicating so effectively. I want one of those, all right? In fact, where I'm using one of those right now to take this uh, video. And Edwin Land would be so impressed. Uh, and uh, Well, Edwin Land actually has some futuristic ideas himself. Uh, he was, like in science fiction, he would think ahead. So he probably wouldn't be as surprised. He probably would have expected us to be able to take a picture or a video and send it around the world uh, all within a minute or so. Okay, so that's the, the general idea of how to approach uh, problem solving. This is our first class, you know, first chapter, so we're saying some, some general things here. Uh, then we'll get into the, the details of physics from class to class and, and different formulas and different things. Okay, we'll see you next time.